All right, all right. Hey, YouTube, I'm Lucky, and this is your weekly Zer Loot and Location PSA. This week, he's located in the EDZ, just past the Winding Cove. This is his one of three locations. As far as exotics go, he has the Cerberus Plus One, which is an odd rifle that basically functions kind of like a shotgun. It shoots four bullets at the same time, and in doing so, it makes it much more like a shotgun. It doesn't have a really long range. It also doesn't have extreme lethality. Could this be really good next season after shotguns get nerfed? That is a big question that will be unanswered. Right now, it's not meta. I don't think it will be meta next season, but it will certainly be closer to meta, especially as shotguns get nerfed, and we'll start seeing maybe more people use stuff like SMGs and sidearms. So Cerberus, definitely worth grabbing if you don't already have it. Most of you probably do, though. Graviton Forfeit is probably like an A-tier exotic for hunters overall. The improved invisibility is really nice. However, uh, invisibility tends to last for a good amount already, so you don't necessarily need this too often. I tend to think that there's a few hunter exotics that just stand out significantly better than this Graviton Forfeit, so I'm not going to say that this is S tier, but it's definitely a good exotic and worth grabbing. Uh, this distribution, this roll right here, is not the best though, so um, it's just better than collections at most. And then we have Syntheseps, which is uh, easily an S tier exotic for Titans, PvE. PvP, there's always good applications for these. These things are always really, really good. Uh, this roll is pretty bad with 3 recovery, though, and 13 mobility, so not the best roll overall. The best exotic this week is probably this Nezrak Sin. It does have a low stat for uh, 60, but this is really, really good for Void right now, Void uh, Warlocks, and with Void 3.0. Uh, most of you have already been using this if, you, if you've been playing on Warlock, but well, we've got 19 recovery and 20 discipline is really good. The mobility is a little bit of a throw, and the 60 is a little bit of a throw, but still a pretty good distribution overall for exotic. Uh, next up, we have the Last Dance Sidearm, and this one has Moving Target and Dragonfly. So Dragonfly is probably the worst perk on this, unfortunately. If it had something other than that, it would be a really good roll. Uh, moving on to the Grid Skipper, which is pretty cool to see. We've got these weapons coming back in here. Uh, this is a 540 Pulse Rifle. These things are super lethal, super strong. This roll is actually pretty good, too, uh, with Ricochet Rounds. That range masterwork, this is definitely worth grabbing if you haven't used this before, if you haven't rocked a 540 in PvP, uh, it's really good. It's actually not the worst ever in PvE either with that roll. Um, then we have the Farewell with Heating Up Adrenaline Junkie. Not a very good roll, unfortunately, and we're definitely not rocking sidearms in PvE in the current sandbox. Next up, we have the Sojourner's Tail. It's got Moving Target and Adrenaline Junkie. Unfortunately, uh, this is a really good slug, but uh, this roll is not it, so... Moving on to the next one, we have the Star Wars Verse. It has Outlaw 1 for All, which is actually pretty sick. Uh, with Arc, if you ever need Arc Singe or if you're trying to clear ads, this will actually be really solid. 1 for All procs really well with Auto Rifle 600 RPMs. Outlaw will give you a little bit extra reload speed. This is definitely a good roll, worth grabbing for sure for PvE purposes. Next up, we have the Shattered Cypher Machine Gun. This does have Field Prep and Surrounded. These 900 RPM machine guns are kind of wonky right now, or they just shoot way too fast and just dump their entire magazine in an instant. Uh, we'll see next season when machine guns do get a gigantic buff, if these are any good. If they are, this could very well be a very good roll, so I would recommend uh, potentially grabbing this if you don't already have a really good roll of the Shattered Cypher, because next season is meant to be like a machine gun season. Then we have the Bite of the Fox. Now, the sights on this thing are really weird. I hate it. Most people hate it. It has like a weird like uh, chevron in the middle, but if you can get past those sights, this is actually a pretty good roll overall. Uh, the handling might feel pretty weird, but um, we've got opening shot on it, threat detector. Obviously, you're not going to get too many people that close to you when you're with the sniper, so keep that in mind. And next season, they're changing the ADS of snipers, so this thing, even though it doesn't have snapshot like we're normally looking for, um, next season, it won't matter nearly as much. So definitely not a crazy grab, but something could be worth grabbing if you want that opening shot sniper. The opening shot's also getting nerfed too, though, so keep that in mind. So we'll see how well this does overall. Uh, as far as armor goes for the Hunter, we have a 65 stat gauntlet with 15 recovery, 25 discipline, and 15 mobility. This is insane. This is absolutely worth grabbing. If you have a Hunter, even if you don't play Hunter, you should grab this because this is just like free, insane stats. Obviously, the best armor in the game is the Artifice armor, and then you also have the Vow of the Disciple armor like I've talked about before. But if you want just free, amazing, like good stats for PvE and PvP, this is definitely it right here. Uh, then we have the chest piece at 58, which is extremely low, probably not worth grabbing. 25 intellect is pretty crazy, but the 7 resilience is a bit of a throw, so we're definitely going to skip that class item. And then we have the helmet is actually at a 67 stat roll. This might be the highest stat armor I've ever seen Zer have. A 67 is pretty insane. 20 mobility, uh, really low recovery, and 22 strength, though. 
not the best distribution overall, but not the worst. I mean, for Hunter, you know, you get your dodge back a bunch, and you can use your melee, which is often really good on Hunter. So could be worth grabbing for you. Um, and then we have the boots at 58, another really low roll. So overall, not very good there. We'll go on to the Titan and Warlock Hunter right now before we go to see the exotics. For the Titan armor, we have Gauntlets at 56. So we're not even going to look at those. That's just way too low. We have a chest piece that's at 61. It has really high resilience and really high discipline. So a decent distribution there overall, a little low on the recovery side. And then as far as the helmet goes, we've got uh, a 55 stat. So we're not even going to look at that. That's way too low. And then a 66 stat roll. It's got way too much mobility on these boots though. But the distribution besides the mobility is actually pretty good. So some boots for the, the Titan. And then moving on down to the Warlock, we have Gauntlets at 59 stat with really high resilience. Not the best distribution and a little low on the number. And then we've got 64 with another high resilience roll. So unfortunate for Warlock. The helmet has extremely high mobility with a 66 overall. Um, if you're looking for mobility on your Warlock, that's not too bad. But overall, that's not the usual uh, desired stat on Warlock. And then we have a 59 stat roll pair of boots, a little on the low side. Recovery is only 10, mobility is 12, so unfortunately not really any good armor for the Warlock this week. Last but not least, we're going to go look at the exotics on the second page. We've got the Hawk Moon, which has Killing Wind. Not a bad perk overall, not the best in my opinion, but not a bad perk. And then the Dead Man's Tail with Moving Target, unfortunately not it. Vorpal is the role you want for that one. That one is kind of like set in stone, like you should just use Vorpal. There's a few different roles of the Hawk Moon that you could kind of go with, so... There it is. That's a wrap on your Xur loot and location PSA. Let me know your thoughts down below. Which of these weapons will you be grabbing? Which of these exotic armor pieces or legendary armor pieces will you be grabbing? I'll be reading all your comments down below. And make sure you're subscribed right here with notifications on if you want to stay up to date on all the news in Destiny 2. Smash the like button. See you in the next one. Later.